What if I told you that if you could solve a kid's maze, you can always win in chess? That's impossible! Well, it's true. Throughout this video, we'll be going over the matchbox algorithm and how we can apply it to 1D chess. You might be wondering, what is 1D chess? One-dimensional chess is a 1x8 board that consists of a king, knight, and rook on both sides. Just like chess, the objective is to checkmate the enemy and prove intellectual dominance. Beams, you in your face, machines! All the pieces in 1D chess move just like their 2D counterparts, with the exception of the knight, who can now only jump over a tile at a time. So let's take a look at the AI we'll be creating. As we can see, my chess career is going to be replaced by computers in the coming years. The most surprising thing is that this artificial intelligence isn't doing anything that can't be done with some matchboxes and beads. This algorithm is known as the matchbox algorithm, which is a more playful way of saying graph theory. Don't be scared though, graph theory is just mazes for adults. Graph theory works like the following. Let's take a look at this decision tree. Assuming that we always choose the top path, we end up with a depth first search similar to what's shown on screen. Simple, right? Now let's address some complications. Sometimes we have a graph that loops back on itself, sometimes we have a graph with two answers, and sometimes there might not be a solution. Fear not, even with these challenges, logic and math will be our guide throughout this maze. Now that we know about graph theory, let's figure out how to apply it to games like 1D chess. Learning is best in pairs, so we won't be training just one model, but instead we'll be training two. We need the matchboxes for both black and white because we do not know all the game states, and the black matchbox is used to help train the white matchbox to find the end. This friendly competition is not new to the world of machine learning, and there are several models like the teacher-student, as well as peer-to-peer, -peer, which requires one AI to help train the other AI. If the white matchbox is playing optimally, it should never get stalemated or checkmated. This also means it should deplete the black matchbox of all of its moves, leaving it barren and empty. Let's now transition over to our code to find out how we can make this for ourselves. To start, we'll need to build a chest engine, which is surprisingly the hardest part of the code due to there being no third-party packages to import 1D chess. Thankfully, the only pieces that we have are the rook, knight, and king, and their moveset are only back and forth, However, there is some spooky recursion logic to detect if a move places the user in check. After that, we can get into the fun stuff like training our AI. The reason why this is called Matchbox AI is because Donald Michi did all this coded logic, but with actual matchboxes. Hopefully some nice candles were lit with all of those matches. Both the black and white move sets start empty, and when the new game state is reached, a matchbox is added to the set. We'll always pick from the first move listed, and when we reach a dead end, we'll remove the move which brought us there. This training is relatively fast and can be done in under 200 games. I'm storing all my games in a JSON, however for larger games such as Connect 4, it may be better to store the data in a database. That way we don't max out our RAM. Finally, we have a GUI. But if you want to see how that's done, you should check out my GitHub where the full code can be found. If you like this video and want to watch more, you should check out this one here and consider subscribing. Till next time, friends!